Oh, hi, Taryn here with Elegant Upgrades. And uh, I know you're not used to me in the intro, but we are today because we are participating in the Ugly Duckling Challenge put on by, of course, Corey from Desert DIY. She is incredible. She does just so many things and helps so many people. And I am always just so inspired by her. So go check her out if you haven't. Also, there's like a billion other people that are doing this challenge. So there will be a playlist and you can follow all of those people and see what they did from trash to treasure, just hopefully ugly ducklings into swans. So this is my piece. Um, it actually was in decent shape. It was just really ugly. So we uh, spruced her up and made her something fancy. And I got to use my new decoupage paper. So I'm excited to do that. So if you guys want to see how we did this look, uh, go ahead and keep on watching. All right, so as you can see, um, structurally, fine but aesthetically terrible uh, they clearly use spray paint and not well they just kind of shot it everywhere so um, i'm kind of deciding how i want to go about this typically i would sand because i don't love using stripper but because this has so many spindles um, stripping was the way to go and i'm using citrus strip which is maybe my least favorite <laughs> stripper but it's the only one that i had on hand at the moment so I'm going to give this a good clean to make sure I can get everything off the base and then I'll go ahead and strip everything down. Um, I will actually try my hardest to never get anything with this many spindles on it, but I was having a really hard time finding an ugly piece. Thus, this one with a lot of spindles. So to get these, I just took the stripper. As you can see, I just have like a little pile there and I have a nylon brush. I picked these up at the dollar store and I get it on and kind of scrub it around. I'll let it sit and then I can go back and scrub it again. And the top I ended up doing with the stripper as well because, you know, I already had it out. I'm already going to make a mess. Might as well. Use mineral spirits to deactivate this and get it all cleaned up. And then I use a steel wool to help go through and get everything off. And then I actually will use the, the steel wool is great because it conforms to whatever you're putting it on. So it made doing the spindles quite a bit easier as well. I made sure those were dry and then I went back in with sandpaper just to get rid of any residual gunk that was left over. And grab my orbital to just kind of give a scuff sand on the rest of the piece. Now, since I know I'm going to change out the hardware on this, I'm blocking up these holes with some tape and I'm just gonna fill it with some wood filler to give me a flush surface until I figure out what hardware I'm going to be using. I certainly don't have anything with that exact spacing, so I knew I had to fill them regardless. And then once the top fully dried, I could go through and sand that down and get it all nice and smooth. I typically do this with about a 220. And you'll know if I'm going to prime something, I'm going to use the gray 123 primer. It's my favorite. It's light enough to do light colors over, but not white for dark colors. So I just like having one product on hand at all times instead of having multiples if it's not necessary. And I don't find it to be necessary. So I'm just going to go through and prime the entire base of this just to make sure that I have a good base layer. And also I'm going to decoupage this and I like to decoupage over this primer too. I use about a three inch foam roller to do large flat areas. And then I always just keep a chip brush on hand to work around any smaller areas. Thank you. 
Now for the top, I'm going to go in with Chalk Mountain's Walnut Oil Stain. This one is in white. It is going to give me a really nice, soft, kind of bleached wood look. It is just my most favorite color in there. They have several, a light brown, dark brown, and a black. The white is obviously my favorite. I just, I love it so much. Um, this stuff is different than your typical stain, so you do have to kind of get used to it, but it's very, very easy to use, and it's self-sealing if you don't want to seal something. I will end up sealing this because it's the top of an end table, and I just feel like it needs extra protection when people like to set glasses and things on them. But you essentially just squirt it on, um, rub it in, make sure you get all the different directions, and then I will usually smooth it along with the wood grain, and then let it sit overnight and then you can wipe off the excess. Then if you'd like to go extra and do another coat, you totally can after the next day. You can apply this with a brush or a rag. Chalk Mountain has these little application sponges and they're super convenient for this and they worked really well on the spindles too. They had just kind of squeezed them around and they conformed really nicely. So I was really happy to have that on hand. Now, once I was letting this set up, I can't do anything else to the oil stain while it's setting, so I just went in with another coat of primer, or Lucas did anyways. Um, and then, like I said, this is the next day I can go back and wipe off the excess oil that is left over from the stain, and if you want to do a second coat, now's the time to do that. If you watched last week's video, you know that I had a surplus of molds that I had done. I wasn't sure if I was going to use these on that dresser, and since I didn't, I had extra that I could just use on these on this piece to add a little extra fans and kind of upgrade the hardware a little as well. Now for throwing my papers on. I have a ton of these images because I'm also a fine art photographer. I think it is one of the most fun things to do aside from making furniture pretty. Um, I create these weird elaborate stories in my head and then bring them to life to the best of my abilities. So um, I made this dress out of newspapers and then of course I made a newspaper boat and then of course I did all kinds of editing to make this come to life with my camera. Um, anyways. I print out all my own decoupage papers, but I have these now on Zazzle if you are interested. I know it's super weird um, and it won't be for everybody and that's totally fine, but um, they are available. I'll have them linked down below. Anyways, to apply all of my papers, any decoupage paper that I do, I use the Chalk Mountain Satin Poly. I put on a thin layer when it's thin tissue paper like this. Put it on, smooth it out. I don't mind if there's a little bit of wrinkling. That doesn't bother me at all. I just kind of be very, very gentle when I'm doing this because this is very, very thin paper that I'm using. Um, you use whatever thickness paper that you enjoy. And then I will go over with the poly again over the top and this actually helps smooth out the paper a lot. I typically will use the brush very, very gently and almost um, flat with the piece and I will use that to smooth the paper out and then this paper specifically is super super thin so it just kind of melds really easily with the piece i'll let that dry and then fix the edges later so this top has been sitting for about three days before i go in and seal it with poly because it is actually walnut oil with pigments inside of it you don't want to just use a water-based poly over the top right away um, you'll have some issues with that. But if you let it dry fully and make sure that you have all the excess oil removed off the top, you can totally seal it with their water-based poly and it works fine. Now that my paper is dry, I just take a sanding sponge and run that along the edges. And that is just a perfect fit on the piece. I paint in almost all of my decoupage papers unless I have a frame or something to go around them. Um, so that's what we're gonna do here. I'm not worried about the um, blank spot there, but I am taking the sanding sponge a little more aggressively towards the top to make sure that there's no lip that you can see once you paint over the paper. So I've chosen these colors based on my paper colors. I always kind of try and pick things that will match and that I can make work into them. And I'm going to 
almost match the front with the sides. This is a very beginner friendly blend because we're doing very similar colors. Now the bottom I started out very dark, but the way that I do it is they're in different sections, so it makes it much easier to blend in the top. I've mentioned this before, but there are parts of a piece where I know that I'm not gonna wanna blend over, so I just make sure that those color transitions don't head over that. So this bottom lip here, I know that I'm not gonna wanna blend over that, so I make that one solid color. Because once I open the cabinets, the whole inside is going to be that dark gray color. That way you don't have to worry about blending within the cabinet. I can just keep that solid because that is a solid color there, but when I close the drawer, the doors, then I can blend up from there. I hope that makes sense, but I've talked about it in a lot of my other blending videos. Now for the base of this, I have two different colors that I'm going to use, and because the decoupage paper is essentially water, but it's almost a newspapery colored type thing, I want this whole overall piece to be that really old, kind of muted color, like an old newspaper, and also water at the same time. I, This is just what I have in my head, so that's what I'm doing. So I'm essentially taking the light water color first and then I'll go over with more of a newspaper over the top. Um, I don't mix the colors together separately and then put them on as one coat because I feel like it looks more interesting doing it in two different stages. So you could totally just mix the color up that you think looks good but I actually like seeing the difference. There's like subtle differences in your painting when you keep the two colors separate and add them on in separately. So here is more of the background newspaper color and like I said, I'm just going directly over the top of the watercolor. And you'll see the variations in both colors as you're brushing. I am keeping my strokes completely horizontal so that it matches with the papers because water is obviously, when you look at water lines, it's always horizontal. So I'm making sure that my final brush strokes are horizontal to kind of mimic the same direction as water if you were looking at a picture of water. Um, so as you can see when I go around the circle or any of the inside corners of anything, I will go around with my brush there but at the end I will smooth them out to be flat straight lines. Now I'm going to take a chip brush and I'm so so lightly dipping this in the dark gray and I'm just ever so gently like whispering it across the wet paint Again, this matches the papers on the side, just how the water looks over there. So I'm just blobbing these on. I know it looks crazy. Don't worry, it doesn't forever. I'm misting it with water so my paint doesn't dry up and then I'll go through and smooth it all out. Again, keeping those straight lines as much as possible. And then this will also blend into the piece, blend in with the tissue paper that's on the sides of the piece without being too overdone. And then also it will help bring in more of the gray from the bottom so it's not such a huge transition there.
Then again, to make my life easier, I'm keeping this top section just the one solid color so I know I don't have to blend that. Now to blend in the papers, I'm essentially going to do the same thing. Keep the bottom dark because the bottom of the papers themselves are a little bit darker. So I'm going to go even further dark down below on the piece and then of course lighter up top. So again, I'm not blending down on the bottom. I'm just keeping it more of a solid color down there so that it's easy and I don't have to worry about it. And then we can blend up from there. This piece is sealed with poly, the tissue paper is. So if I make any mistakes over this, it's totally fine. I can just take a damp cloth and it will wipe right back and I can fix it. Or if I just didn't like any paint on certain spots, I can take it off for good and I don't have to worry about it. So as you can see, this kind of watery color that I've chosen is just a little too bright and blue for the newspaper color. So that's why I take that and put it over the top and it just kind of helps it live a little more easily with the almost grayscale tone of the image. And then of course I take those teeny tiny little brush strokes of the gray, get them on there and it matches the print. And you're just doing this to your liking. Like I said, if it goes on and it's something that you don't like, you can always wipe it back and start over. But it's just playing around, going back and forth, seeing what you like, seeing what feels good to you, and that's, that's all blending these papers in really is. Then I was, as I was looking at it and I had the legs done with the white stain, I decided that they were too light since I had the top dark. So I ended up just doing a gray wash over the top of these and I liked that much better. So I could still see the wood tone. It still looked like I had done all the work on the legs, but now they were just a tinge darker because of the gray wash and I just felt like it looked just a little more cohesive that way. And to do the hardware, I had to obviously drill in new holes because I had filled in the old ones and just had to clean up the holes anyways from the little appliques that we put on to make sure that they would fit the screws coming in on the hardware. I had these little white knobs that I guess kind of matched, but then I was like, you know what? I have extra hardware from last week's dresser and I'll just use those because they're pretty. Now this is a mix of glazing dust and poly that I have almost on hand all the time. I call it my rose pewter color. It's kind of um, a silvery rosy color. It's very subtle and lovely and sometimes I'll use it to seal a piece. Sometimes I just use it to highlight which is what I'm doing right here. Um, I just keep it mixed up and if I have extra of something else sometimes I'll add to it. I just don't like wasting it. So I always have it around. So I'm just highlighting these things. We're gonna do a lot of layers because I want this thing to look very textured and old just because of the style that it is and it just kind of reminds me of that. So I'm also painting the hardware with this. It will be sealed so I'm not worried about anything coming off or anything. It's, it's a built-in sealer in itself essentially. And now I'm gonna go in with some white wax. So you can totally omit this step if you don't wanna use it and that's absolutely fine. But because the newspapers have that really old feel to me, I wanna give this piece a little more of an aged look as well. So I'm taking the white wax, it's going to tone everything all together and make it look a little bit more worn and aged. Even though it's with white instead of doing it with say like an antiquing wax or black. I didn't want to darken this up because I want it to be a very almost light and airy piece but it still gives it that kind of old worn in look without darkening it and it also gives extra layers of protection which I'm always a, a huge fan of that. This also adds like that old world vibe that you guys know I adore and it lets like all the white wax sit down into the crevices and it helped the hardware kind of look a little more together with the piece. I just felt like it made everything just a little more cohesive.
And that's a wrap for this one. I hope you guys enjoyed this. I hope you like the new paper. I, of course, printed this one off on my own, but if you'd like to check out your own and you don't print your own papers, you can see them. I will have that link down below. I will also have the entire playlist for all the Ugly Duckling Challenge participants in the description as well. And just thank you guys so much for always being so kind to me and wonderful and leaving all your amazing comments. They just make my heart so happy. So I'll see you guys next week and I hope you have an amazing day.